What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here and welcome to Bass Tone, tone, tone Tuesday. 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 Today we're going to talk about fan frets and that's why I have my Dingwall Super P with me because it is a fan fret instrument. If you've been following the channel you've probably heard this bass in other videos. I've used it quite a bit, I've recorded several covers and all videos, as well as the first single of my band Ash Makers. I'm gonna put a card or a description here if you wanna check that out and also a link in the description below. And by the way, the second single of us, of Ash Makers, is dropping on October 15 and you don't wanna miss that. You can pre-save the track also in the description of the video. But about fan fret basses. So, what are fan fret instruments? As you can see here on the bass, and I'm gonna put also a picture so you can take a better look at it. The instrument doesn't have parallel frets, so you have frets that are kind of crooked and move like this, like a fan. That's where the name comes from. But why are the frets like that? Many people think that the frets are placed like this for perfect intonation or for ergonomic reasons, but the thing is that the technical name, I would say, of fan fret instruments is that they are multi-scale instrument. And that means that in comparison to a regular P bass or a jazz bass, which most of them are 34 inches long, and that's its standard long scale range for, a, for an electric bass. Most of the basses out there are that long, 34 inches. Here we have different scale lengths for each string. And to compensate for those different scale lengths, you have to adjust the bridge. As you can see here, I'm gonna try to close up or put a picture. Each one of the saddles is in a different position and this particular bass has uh, scale lengths going from 34.25, so 34 and one quarter of an inch on the E string, and the G string is 32 uh, inches. And then the middle ones go up three quarters of an inch each string. So we have a bit of a longer of a scale on the E string, and then the G string is kind of like a medium scale bass. And if, of course, you have a five string bass, you can extend the B string even longer, which is why most of the basses that are getting popular and you know the companies that are making multi-scale instruments uh, are mostly doing that for extended range basses or five string basses so that people can have a longer scale length on the low B, because with a longer scale, you can drop tune a lot more and still retain tension. This takes me to my next point, which is one of the benefits of a multi-scale instrument is that it allows you to have a more even tension across the string, so you get a more comfortable playing feel as well. Usually on regular basses, most of the time, the D and the, and the G string have the most amount of tension and they feel tighter as well when playing it. If you grab a package of, for example, um, you know, standard 45 to 100, 5 or 45 to 100, uh, the D and the G string, for most brands, is gonna feel tighter than the E and the A string. Of course, there are brands that try to improve their sets by, you know, messing around with the, the core width or how much core is on the string, varying from string to string to give you a more even playing feel. But generally speaking, those two strings have the most amount of tension and you have to pluck and press a little harder. But with a multi-scale approach or a fan fret approach, those upper strings feel looser because the scale is shorter compared to the lower strings. And the lower strings are longer providing you with more tension, thus giving you more definition. And you can think of a fan fret instrument or a multi-scale instrument as if it was a piano, you know, a grand piano. There, the higher strings, you know, the right portion of the instrument has a shorter scale length 
and the lower strings, you know, the bass register of a piano has very long strings and thus a longer scale length and those have a very pristine sound and really growl and have a lot of clarity even though the notes are really 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 low and the multi-scale approach tries to you know replicate that like i said one of the biggest benefits is the tension and you definitely get the most rewards uh, of it with a five uh, five string bass and for example Dingwall has gotten very popular with their ultra long scale length which is 34 to 37 inches long that way the B string has a lot more definition and you can also use a string with a lower gauge so Dingwall uses 127 I think for the B string and I think a 98 for the E string, which is in that case 36 inches. And, you know, that gives you the benefit of, because you have the longer scale length, you don't need such a thick string to get the right amount of tension. And because you're using a smaller diameter of a string, it's first of all easier to play, and also you get more harmonics that way. Now, like I said earlier, this one is a different scale from that. So this one is 32 to 34. So even though this is not a five string bass, not a, an ultra long or super long scale, you still get the benefits of the fan fret system. Because like I said, the tension of the strings is really, really even. Whether I'm playing on the G string or the E string or in the middle, the strings feel pretty close. I don't need to pluck harder or lighter to, you know, balance the output or the volume of the strings. It feels very natural. You don't have to put more effort into playing. Now, the other benefit, for example, in this case, with this particular scale length, is that sometimes on some basses, the G and D string sound kind of brittle. You know, they sound kind of weak and not very, they don't carry that much weight. Now in this case, because we have a almost regular long scale on the E string, but a medium scale on the G string and almost a medium scale on the D string, those sound warmer. They have a bit more body to them. So I'm gonna play something. I'm gonna play just the open strings first, and then I'm gonna play a bass line, and I want you to, come to hear the, the weight of the notes, so. So as you could hear, the G string doesn't sound that thin or, or like brittle as compared to another basses, especially com compared to the D string. Of course, the D string is gonna sound a bit fuller because it has more mass, but it's not as if the this thing didn't carry any weight. It feels definitely fuller than on some other bases. If you ask, or, or should put it this way, most people that comment on this usually say that you don't need any adjustment, that it's just super lateral. And I have to agree with that for the most part. If you play in the lower register, which we as a bass players mostly do most of the time, um, there's very little things that you have to get adjusted to, especially with a bass with this scale. On the super long scale ones, you know, there's definitely a bit more of a stretch, um, but still, it feels 
pretty natural. You don't have to worry about landing somewhere else where you didn't want to play. The If I'm looking at this, I'm not looking at the frets right now. I'm just looking at my dots, for example, and I can... I don't have to worry about playing some other note. It feels very natural. You know, that's not a problem. But there are a couple of things that might require some adjustments, especially here in the upper portion of the of the base, because the fanning gets a bit more steep. So you might need to adjust some hand positions or which finger you use. Some of it goes away when you have the base like in a classical position like this, which is also probably how you're gonna use it standing up because you're standing up and the base is gonna be like that, um, unless you use the base completely horizontal. Um, but for example here, if I sit down with bass on my right leg, playing, you know, root fifth octaves, uh, starting with like the 10th fret, sometimes my pinky lands a bit further to the right than where the fret is, so you do have to pay attention to that. And like I mentioned, some things here require a bit of an adjustment. Overall though, it is fairly natural to do it because your hand somewhat moves this way, the way the frets are angled when you're playing, but you shouldn't feel discouraged by, you know, the angled frets when playing. One thing that has to be said is that different manufacturers use different ranges of the fanning on their bases. Dingwall, for example, if this was a five string bass, we would have a difference range or a gap of three inches. So the G string is 32 and the B string would be 35. On their longer models, the G string is 34 and the B string is 37. I think all companies like Ibanez and Strandberg go with a much narrower range of, I think, 33 to 35 on the five string versions. So there's a difference of one inch on the top strings and they only offer those ranges. So if you need a really long scale or wanna try a really long scale, there are our brands like Spectre is doing one base like that. And I don't remember which our brand, but I would definitely recommend you to give one multi-scale instrument a try because there are definitely benefits in terms of even tension, even tone, and you know the benefit that if you need to really drop tune, you can do that without worrying that the strings are gonna be too floppy. But does that mean that a fan fret bass or a multi-scale instrument is better than a regular parallel fretted bass guitar. That is kind of hard to say because there are benefits, like I said, there are a couple of benefits to the design, but some of them might also require you to adjust your playing. And if you're talking about one of those really long scale instruments, you know, 37 inches or something, um, it might feel a bit like a stretch to you, depending on how tall you are, how big your hands are. And, you know, you might need to stretch a bit your, your arm a bit more, which, you know, can get your shoulder a bit more tired. So those are things that you have to take into account. With this range of instruments, which is a bit shorter, it's a, a bless to play, I have to say. It's super comfortable. I'm a short person, so I benefit from having one of these. And I don't play a lot of down-tune metal stuff, so I don't need that super long scale to drop tune or to, to tune in C standard or something. And by the way, the, the other dingwall bases that are longer are also great for regular regular music. You don't need to you know drop tune or you don't need to play metal to to play them. For example, Lee Sklar has been playing dingwall bases for many years. And the bass player from Duran Duran is also a dingwall user and recently um, the bass player of uh, Dave Matthews band, I don't remember the name right now, but he's also using dingwall right now. So there are more players switching nowadays to fan fret basses or fan fret instruments uh, because of the benefits of, you know, even tension, even response to the notes and just comfortable feeling as well as having the ability to really down tune the bass without having a string being super floppy. I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know in the comments if you have played a fan fret instrument before and if you liked it. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content 
that's coming to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.